What's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwresearch.com and this is a video about a 3D printer. We're going to unbox it, we're going to put it together, that's going to be the first video. And then we're going to do some printing and some configuration and do some testing. That's going to be a second video. In the third video, this is also a laser engraver. So it's a laser engraver, it is a 3D printer, and we're going to unbox it right now. It is not the CR10 because everyone's got that. This is actually the Creality CR8 2 in 1 laser and 3D printer. Let's get started. Let's see what's in the box. Stuff. We like stuff. Oh, it does come with a a parts list. Very nice. Comes with all the things that are supposed to be in this box. All right, let's see what we got. We got the power cord AC for 120 volts this time. I picked the right one. Last time I got a uh, European version, which was not helpful. So it looks nicely packed so far. All right. Just a box. A box in a box in a box. Oh! It does come with laser glasses. Look at that! Oh, glasses. Number one. Here is a handle for the top. It's actually not 3D printed. This is inject and molded. Injection molded. Accessories. Nuts and bolts and things. The nozzle. And the Bowden tube connector. USB cord. Something in uh, oh, a guarantee quality certificate. Quality control pass. Cool. Boards. Four boards for you to try. Nice. Instruction manual. Ooh. I mean, actually, look how pretty that is. Nice and colorful. Look at them shoes right there. Spool of generic PLA. 1.75 millimeter. White. Looks like we got some tools. Ooh, look at that. That's actually halfway decent pair of those really sharp side cuts. We got some zip ties and we even got all the tools possibly needed to put this together. 8 gigabyte Elite Pro SD card plus multi-use card reader. Cool. Scraper. Oh look at that. I shrink wrapped it so it wouldn't cut anything while shipping. And it's sharp. Unlike the other one from the e-carry. Threaded rod. Here we got the, uh, what appears to be 3D. This must be the spool holder. And I bet this is where the spool's supposed to go. So it looks like uh, black acrylic. Like, oh yeah, shiny nice black acrylic. And we got a little piece of Bowden tube. And we even have a really long needle thingamajob. I'm presuming that's for cleaning out the nozzle. That's all in, that's in here. So, uh, where do I start? Wow, that's a really big adapter. Uh, it is 24 volt. Whoa, 12.3 amps. That's a big boy. That's a really, really big boy. This looks like the base. Here we go. Oh, there's a nozzle already on it, and a extruder, and a fan, and the motor. Extruder motor is on there already. Okay, it's all pretty well assembled, this part. We got the base here. Get a closer look at that in a minute, but it's got a uh, DC, 24 volt DC and USB. The card slot is on the side. It does have a power button. That's fantastic. Push on, push off. Um, Creality. Creality 3D CR8. All right, in case you're wondering, the print volume is 210 by 210 by 210. Uh, the entire machine, that's a millimeter. The entire machine is 390 by 460 by 500. It does have a heated bed. It's a pretty good deal. Let's get the rest of the stuff out of the box. All right, so here is the laser. The question I have that I couldn't find online is what wattage is the laser. 
So it's got its own little DC plug, and there is the laser. Let's see. It is, oh, it does not say, wavelength 400 to 450, class 3B laser product. Huh. Forbidden to children. Cannot point eyes by laser directly. <laughs> uh, that's kind of interesting. Doesn't actually say what it is. All right, well, we're going to see what we can burn, I guess. Really funky looking, not flat brown paper tape. A small bracket probably for the upright. It's got a T-nut in there. What appears to be the upright. These look like really nice extruded aluminum pieces. Limit switch is on here, it looks like. This is not a 3D printed plastic part. That's an injection, and that's an injection molded part. Nice. We got one of the most critical and important components, which is the Z arm, or the, uh, I mean the um, linear, not linear. I can't think right now. What's that called? I'll remember it in a minute. Someone help me. Ah, I remembered. It is the lead screw. Um, this has got some interesting screw pattern on it. It's a little different. It's pretty steep. Much more steeper than I'm used to. Nice little motor. Packed well. It's got grease on it. So that's why they put this sleeve over it so they don't get grease everywhere. And that appears to be all the things in the box. So let's see how assembly goes. Alright, let's take all this tape off, I guess. It's taped down pretty well. Little side note, if you can't get all the sticky stuff off, you can just take the other piece of tape and sort of pull all that sticky stuff off if it leaves it on there. Looks like it's on the belt a little bit. On the edges. Works pretty well every time. That's pretty well it. So I am just going to follow the instructions. I have no idea how to put this together. Instruction manual. Figure it out. CR8. Blah 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 blah. Something or another. Oh, the last thing it says this is um, circuit caused by fire or electric shock. Well, that sounds like a good thing. Z, X, Y. Z installation. So there are no really much text, it's just pictures. So I guess we'll have to figure it out. Load X axis component into the Z axis. Okay, and it shows me here the X, the Y, and the Z. So I'm going to load the X axis components into the Z. The X into the Z. Hmm. It's not real clear, but that's step number one. This being here, okay, got that. The Switch is on the bottom. Assembly here for the filament is on the top. This is facing this way. Orange things are in the front, like this. Ooh, fits nice. Fits real nice. Just like that, apparently. Step two, counterclockwise rotation Z shaft screw. Load X axis put into Z axis, but. Uh, okay, so apparently, apparently they're talking about this. Okay, they've got it like this. The screw in, the lead screw apparently. It looks a little loose. The lead screw, a little loose. Get our tools out. Smaller. This one? No, this one. Oh, they're even, they're even ball ends. Nice. That's good. I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. All right, so it appears the grease is coming off because it's packed pretty good. So we're gonna, we're gonna want to move some of that to the top, just FYI. But see how they got the lock washer between the metal and the brass piece that's rather interesting let's keep going moving forward I'm going to move this grease up to the top you want to be very careful that you don't bend the lead screw okay so it appears these two screws here need to actually go these two actually need to go inside of the base here so as you can see we're going to flip this over now this rail slides Okay, so you want to get these these T-nuts loose so you can stick them in there. While you have this apart, you might want to just make sure these screws are tightened. I like everything to be a little bit tighter than factory because I'm always afraid something isn't tight enough. So now's a good time to kind of tighten a few things. This rail slides in like this. You can see how the T-nuts fit inside that channel. 
Take the Z, take out Z shaft motor. Hmm, apparently we got started early. Counterclockwise rotation Z set shaft screw. Oh no, that's what it says. Step nine is take out Z shaft motor. Hmm, very confusing. Well, I don't really know. But what I'm gonna do is just lightly tighten the Z shaft motor just lightly so it doesn't fall out and we can move it around a little bit later. Might move it up even a little bit more. Next it says press Teflon tube into the joint. I guess, uh, all right, this tube goes in here like that. Step four, feed pipe is inserted into Teflon tube after locking. Feed pipe, press Teflon tube joint. Oh, okay, well, five, remove the handle. Hmm, maybe it meant install the handle. It says remove the handle first and then install. Remove the handle, and then install the handle. I'm kind of confused. I guess I'm supposed to install the handle. Okay, it says, um, mm -hmm. we gotta find the uh, screws that are supposed to go in here. Mm, they're in here. I only see one. I only see one screw. It says install the handle. It does show you which way to do it. The long side sticking out like that. Oh no, these screws aren't long enough. Hmm, those are not the right screws. I'm gonna have to find the right screws. I'll be looking around for a minute. Okay, well apparently when I didn't uninstall it, I lost the screws because it wasn't installed. But that's what it says. Right here. Okay. Remove the handle. Install the handle. Uh, the screws that I cannot find are not in here, and therefore they are lost. So we're going to move on to the next step. Install the Z, oh, Z-axis installation thread end up. Yeah, that's this one, threaded. Got it. Okay, now what? Two, ensure two planes are on the same plane. Ensure the two planes are on the same plane. Uh, sure. Remove the corner. That's this guy right here. So if this looks like goes which way? In the top, actually. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put the T-nut in there. And it looks like it goes that way, just like that. And then it says to put in other side, loosely, of course, like that. Then we install the big arm. Remove the Z fixing block, lock fastening block. Okay, this arm appears to go that way so that the nozzle is over the bed. This makes sense. There are nuts on the side of this plate as well, which need to be loose enough to slide in this channel. Down the side and along the front. That's tricky. So I'm putting in the corner piece, and then I can slide it into the channel. Uh-oh, it fell out. I guess you can turn those nuts sideways and put them in the channel. That makes life easier. You don't actually have to slide them in as long as they're facing the right way. It's sitting on there. Um, supposed to be one more screw on the end. Lightly tighten the side down first. Doesn't fall off. All right, as you can see here, there's a bolt on the side. There's two here, and then you've got the angled piece on the back. So I went ahead and lightly tightened this side so it sort of pulls everything that way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this side, making sure that holding the top down Gonna go ahead and tighten factory ones as well. I like my things tight. Okay, and then we gotta somehow get to that one. Lightly tighten one, then lightly tighten the other. All right, and that's what holds the upright together. Seems all right. All right, that's that. Well, it appears it's coming along pretty good. We've got the axis installed. We've got the linear motor installed. I mean the lead screw motor. Man, that's about it. So we're gonna just adjust this. Ooh, stepper motor down all the way. So remember we lightly tightened those screws earlier. We're gonna now loosen them up enough to slide the whole thing down. I'm gonna hold it ever so slightly off. The reason I'm gonna do that, maybe like uh, this folded piece of paper but the reason I'm gonna do that is so that the vibrations from the motor don't go right into the big box here. And then we can tighten that down now. And that looks like, except for wiring, it's uh, pretty well together. I like this little compact unit, it's not bad. Just gotta figure out a place to put this ginormous power supply. <laughs> okay, 
So it does have wiring, um, wiring diagram here, circuit wiring diagram. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, I don't have the screws for the handle, but they are M512 screws. But I don't see them anywhere. So let's go ahead and see if I can figure out the wiring diagram. Uh, it looks like they are labeled, so that's a, a plus. Looks like we got the Z wiring right here on the bottom. All right, I was trying to figure out how to plug this in. So note to self, the white zip ties are supposed to be cut off. So get the handy dandy cutters. You want to use cutters, not a knife, because if you use a knife, you'll cut all the wires off. Trust me, I've done it. So use this. Very carefully cut just the zip tie. Ooh, those are sharp. These are nice. Just the zip tie. All right, now we can get the, the wires to where they're supposed to go. That makes more sense. All right, so on the bottom here, it looks like this is where the heated bed connector goes. Pretty secure. And then we've got another little bitty wire here that is uh, for the Z switch. I don't know which way it's supposed to go. It looks like by the diagram it goes on the outside. Right like this. Oh yeah. Okay, it plugs in into the bottom right there. Alright, now we're going to do the top wiring. So we've got the X limit switch, the X motor, and the extruder motor. So we'll just start with the extruder motor, I guess. There we go. This looks kind of twisted up. Probably uh, probably should have untwisted this whole thing. Because now it's all twisted, but that's okay. We'll just leave it as it is. Now, extruder motor plug. The X-axis plug. And the limit switch X-axis. Okay, now there is a zip tie right here. You're going to want to cut that off. That frees up the extruder motor. Yeah, there we go. All right, well, except for the handle, I think we got everything. And we went we went through the uh, instructions. I think we've got everything. So the front side actually shows you how to use a few other things. Uh, it does appear that these are all spare parts. So it's got some extra pieces in case you can't find them. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the right bolts for the handle. Um, then it comes with a spare nozzle and a spare Bowden tube connector. I did check the belt tension. It seems to be fine. Just kind of push on it. If it's not fine, uh, maybe in another video we can go through those things, but I think uh, this unit seems like it's a little better than the... Well, I shouldn't say a little better, but it was packed a little better than the Ant E carry. I don't know if it's better yet. We'll find out real soon, won't we? Uh, there is one more wire that's hanging off the end. And that goes to the laser module. I think I'm going to uh, go over this entire thing, just check it out, look at everything, make sure it feels nice and tight and square, and see if I see any problems. I might go ahead and tighten some more screws that I see. Any screw that I can reach, I'll probably give a little extra tight. Um, that's just because I like things tight. You don't want things loosening up. Um, potentially things could have loosened up during shipping, so that's what I'm going to do real quick. All right, so I flipped this guy on its side. I kind of wanted to look at the bottom plate, which is right here. Um, it appears it's got a little play in it, as you can see. That's too much for my liking. While I've got it down here, there are thumb screws which adjust the bed, so you're going to have to level the bed. It's got, looks like a either a printed circuit board or a ceramic type heater on the bottom on a aluminum plate and then on the aluminum plate is a piece of uh, what looks like to be fiberglass and stuff that's on printed circuit boards and that's being held on by these clips that are right here um, while I got this apart I'm gonna go ahead and look at how to adjust this axis and then I'm gonna pop the bottom off because I kinda wanna see what kinda board this has so we'll see Okay, so I went ahead and took off a wheel from the bottom, and I kind of wanted to show you what it looked like. So, as you can see, that is not concentric. It's not in the center, and it turns, and that is how you adjust the wheels. 
So you just loosen the top, or you might not even have to loosen the top. You, if it's too tight, you will, but loosen the top, give this nut a turn right here, and because that's at a offset, it will push the wheel in or out. So a pretty simple way to adjust that. As you can see, this is really simple. You actually don't have to loosen up anything else. You just take this and turn it one way or the other. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. Again, be careful running these motors with everything plugged in. Yeah, that made everything nice and tight. Reinstalling the heat bed. All right, well that was easy. It appears the extruder motor has the same little counter screw or offset screw, I mean, so you can adjust it the same way. But not the up and down. The up and down looks to be a little different. So I want to go ahead and take this part. I kind of want to see what kind of electronics are in here. So just by looking at it, it does have a fan down here. Oh. Look at that. A free zip tie in there. Looks like there are no extra slots for driver motors. It is maxed out. We got a uh, Omega 256. There's a regular relay in here. Not sure if that's for the heated bed yet. All right, uh, looks like there's a couple of other chips. You've got a converter for the power regulator. It does have three lights on it, indicator lights, 24 volt, 5 volt, and 3.3 volt. Here you've got the power button, and the DC plug goes right into the board. And up here in the front, which you cannot see, up here in the front, you've got the LCD controller button on the front. Feels really nice, actually. And a buzzer on the back. So I always like plugging these buzzers up with something. They're just so darn loud. So if I feel that this buzzer is too loud, I'll go ahead and shove some paper in there. All right, let's go ahead and put it back together, and we'll power it on and just see if the thing works. Earlier I mentioned, check all screws. Don't forget the set screws on the drive belt bullies. The drive belt bullies? The drive belt pulleys. This one was loose. I guess we should power it on, see if it works. Well, I was wondering about the laser module. I was looking at the manual here and it says, use of a magnet absorption. Yes, that's what it actually says looking at the laser indeed it has four magnets on it and it just sticks on the side that's pretty cool actually then when you're not using it you can take it off and then you could probably mount this somewhere and again the cords in the back here so when you want to use it you plug it in maybe make the wire a little bit better and uh, yeah you've got a laser engraver I guess it doesn't stay as steady as I would like. Um, part of that is due to the fact that these two screws stick out past the magnets. Hard to see what they do. These are recessed. This allows for less contact on here. I'm going to go ahead and take this off because I want to see what's inside of it so we can tell you what kind of extruder it's got on it. Okay, so there it is. Now it does actually have a piece of uh, insulation with Kapton wrapped around it. So it does have a little bitty tiny heat break. You can see a little heat break there. And it's flat. The extruder is screwed on from the top. And it's flat on this side and flat on that side. And then uh, there's a fan here. Brushless fan, 24 volts. And there's the thermistor. Looks like the thermistor goes in the side and is held in by a screw. Here is the heater block cartridge. So it is aluminum. So is the uh, heat sink. It's not a bad design, but it doesn't have auto leveling. So you're gonna have to figure that out. Alright, look through my collection of things. Found some M5 screws. Now I can pick it up. Very good. Last thing to do, which I don't see on this manual, unless I didn't read it thoroughly enough, or it's not in proper English. Ah, it's not too bad. So the last thing to do is put together this holder for your filament. 
I'm not a big fan of these standalone filament holders. They seem to walk around. So again, I'll probably end up figuring out a way to mount it to the uh, thing. Oh my gosh. I think I spent more time peeling this paper off than I did putting the whole printer together. Oh, that's a pain. Okay, so the assembly for this is easy. This little baggie has this stuff in it. One screw through the end there, and then the nut fits right there. So this is a bit tricky, just like that. Oh, wrong size. Could have left that one on the floor, I guess. Just like that. I don't know. It's a bit weak, but... Okay. And then this sits on there. So they give you, uh... They give you these, uh, nuts with nylon in them. You just kind of hand tighten them. Put your filament on there. Shouldn't be too bad, I guess. I'm still not a fan of these whatsoever, though. The time has come. Does it work? Plugging it in. Powering it on. Cool. Let's try an auto haul. Oh. Wow. Looks like the bed needs to be a lot tighter. Nozzle's hitting. I guess the other way to adjust that is move this up. I think I will. Ah, that seems a little bit better. Without auto leveling, that's going to be fun. Alright, well, taking a look at the SD card. Operating instructions. USB driver and software. Reference data, laser software. Model and printing. So some SDLs on there. Uh, there is assembly and print video there. I did scan through it. That probably would have been helpful if I was confused. But that's okay. Hmm. Everything is so green. Okay. We finally made it to the end. So, the CR8 dual functionality with the laser module. Okay. So, what are my first impressions? I haven't printed with this yet. This was just the un unboxing and assembly. You can see it sitting next to the Ant E carry here. You can see the size comparison. The Ant E carry is. I still love this thing. Let's see if we can pick this bad boy up. Kind of scared. It's got the plastic handle. Still portable. It's not really that much bigger. There goes the power supply. That's one thing to note. The power supply is literally like. A big chunk of this thing it's huge however this has a heated bed and this is a 12.3 amp power supply so that's a pretty big pretty big difference all right so let's talk about the construction real quick in my first opinion um, just from viewing it online and how the bottom is I'm still not a really big fan of the the way that the bottom rail is a single rail and it's holding this way. I'm not a fan of that. However, it's a lot more steady than I thought after I made that little adjustment. So it might be okay. Um, everything else, honestly, is pretty darn good. Um, the way this thing is constructed is not bad at all. The shaft here seems to be perfectly straight. It no bend in it. I do like the way the extruder teeth look. That extruder motor setup looks all right um, i don't like the fact that the plastic goes in right next to this um, i may prefer putting a piece of ptfe kind of sticking it in there so when the filament goes in it doesn't rub against here and get all greasy that's really really close way too close if you ask me but not too bad the extruder itself looks pretty good fan uh it's very noisy when it's just on. The fans running are very loud. Oh, I just got my hand in all the grease on the extruder. Uh, what do I do now? Time out. I do like the fact that it has a power button on it, which is really nice. You can leave it plugged in all the time. However, the power brick is still on. 
that's just one side effect from having the this to be all 24 volt the other thing that uh, one of the things I didn't wasn't really impressed about is how this is stays on I think if I uh, flatten those screws up there so the magnets actually touch it'll be a little better but I think this might move um, but it probably moves really slow when it's doing laser cutting so it's probably not a real big deal but you know you got to focus this so if you knock it in and out of focus it's not really affixed very well and the metal that this sticks to is pretty thin so the magnets don't have too much to stick to but it does stay so I don't know. We'll have to play with that later. All right, so the only thing that's just one of those things that is very frustrating with 3D printing is the leveling. Whoa, my world just got colorful. And that really blocks the light. Okay, we're just gonna have to run down the path of is this thing gonna work the way we think it is? How well does it work? How well doesn't it work? And we'll run through all those things in another video. So don't forget, if you want to buy this printer, go down into the description and use the link down there. It helps me out. So next video, we're going to be doing some printing. we got lots to do, but we'll get there. After that, laser. All right, peace and love. Have a good day. I'll see you guys another day. God bless. Bye. I'm very hot.